With Sportster S, we knew we could put the sport back in Sportster. This motorcycle rides exactly the way that it looks. It's insane. The design was intended to push the limits. The acceleration, just an absolutely exhilarating feel. Revolution Max, unlimited amounts of horsepower and torque right at the twist of a throttle. It's such an exciting, thrilling motorcycle to ride. Yo, can I understand that you're in Scotland and I um, just wanted to welcome you to my country. I hope you have an amazing time there. There are some of the best riding roads in the world in Scotland. And so I hope you've got your Harley with you and that you're gonna um, get some miles done out on the roads. Really have a great time and welcome to Scotland. Bill, it's so great to be in Scotland. Oh man, what a beautiful ride through this beautiful countryside. It's amazing to be here, Jochen. This is a pretty awe-inspiring, emotional experience for me. My ancestry is here. Think about that it all kind of started, you know, with your great, <laughs> great, great grandfather in Scotland. If he had not gone to America, it wouldn't have happened. It would have been a different story. It's a labor of love, the restoration the fact that they preserved it for riders from all around the world to come and enjoy and spend time here. Pretty awesome. Pilgrimage back to the roots. Heritage is so powerful and it's really unique to our company, which I'm so proud of. Yeah, well, and it's so great to combine it, you know, going back to the roots and then launching a new bike which has a whole history on its own. Actually, I was looking at the dates, if you think about it, they left for America in 1857. The first Sportster came to market in 1957, 57. exactly 100 years yeah. later. And now we're here over 60 years later yeah. and are launching the next Sportster. It's quite extraordinary. In the late 50s when Sportster was born, it was considered a giant killer. It was a super bike. Whether you're on the flat track, drag strip, or you're on the street, I mean, it was a real performance motorcycle. The legacy of Sportster for Harley-Davidson is a really important part of our story. We can look at some of these analogs to the automotive world like Mustang, Camaro. Sportster is one of those names that's actually been around, you know, longer than some of those names. It is a name that's instantly recognizable. When you look at the longevity of Sportster from 1957 to today, it's unmatched and unparalleled in the motorcycling world that one model has such staying power. And that's what's made it so special. It's staying with the times, it's getting ahead of the times. That's what the Sportster's done down through its history. For 1957, it starts with one model for that year. And the biggest change is overhead valves. And so it's gonna provide a lot more power, which is what riders were asking for, it's what dealers were asking for. The name Sportster is really synonymous with the general use of that bike. It was a small, nimble, powerful bike. There was a strong demand for it in the market. We were looking at low-priced, high-performing, lightweight motorcycles. And once the Sportster is released, it's really incredible to see where it goes from there. 
In the first year that Sportsters were out, Gerald McGovern campaigned on a new 1957 Sportster and won the Jack Pine Endurance Run, which is one of the most brutal motorcycling events. And so Harley Davidson couldn't help but really make some noise about this. One of the more unique uses happens in which the LA Coliseum is really kind of used as a hill climb. One of the seating sections was outfitted with a ramp to get this thing up to the top, just to show the power of the Sportster model. One of the most important things about the Sportster engine was how versatile it was. You could literally take this engine, you could put it in a road bike, you could put it in a Daytona racer bike, you could put it in scrambles or flat track racing, you could put it in a hill climb, you could put it in a land speed record bike. And it would outperform all the competition in all of those different forms. One monumental point in Sportster history really is the Sportster Streamliner. In 1970, a group of four guys developed this kind of long cigar looking rocket run on a Sportster engine. The first time you look at it, some people might say, that's a motorcycle? It is. You're talking about a Sportster engine going 265 miles an hour and basically kind of crushes the land speed record for its time. A new motorcycle world land speed record. You know, the company's always looking at how can we take this thing that's great and make it even greater. So technology-wise, the bike is always moving ahead. And now today, we have the birth of the Revolution Max platform. So you're going from evolution to revolution. With Sportster S, we knew we could put the sport back in Sportster because it's time. We knew we had the engineering prowess to do it with the RevMax powertrain. The birth of this architecture, it's really knocked down a bunch of fences that we had. Kind of untied our hands in terms of what we can do with form factor, what we can do with performance. You put the right people in the room and you get the right feedback from the customers. You know, you get the right kind of technology and the right kind of thinking, the right kind of mindset. Keep the soul in all the decisions and you get motorcycles like this that push all the boundaries and deliver that Harley Davidson experience. Knowing that we had this opportunity to, you know, think about, well, what is the next generation of Sportster like? You know, our designers, you know, they go to work. They begin to create all kinds of, you know, wild spectrums from staying safe to the traditional to the extremes. We wanted to make sure the first one was wild. It was gonna kind of turn heads. We we're gonna challenge our internal standards. The design team just said, well, let's just turn the dials up to 11. The design was intended to push the limits of what people think when they hear the term sportster. How can we really push everything about this to be as irrational and cool as possible? Anything that's easy isn't as rewarding. We had a lot of freedom. We knew there was nothing ever like it, so there was nothing that was constraining our imagination. It's crazy to me, but of all the designs that we've worked on, this is one where there was the least amount of change from the design mock-up to the final production model. I think when people take a look for the first time at Sportster S, while it's gonna look very different, it's also gonna look very familiar. We wanted to stitch in some iconic elements of the design from different generations of Sportster. The tail section, XR750, the fat 16-inch front wheel, that's 48. If you look at what our customers do with Sportster, customization, you can have the same experience you've had with past Harley Davidson's in terms of making it your own. You can fully kit out the new RevMax family with all kinds of great parts and accessories. For this bike to really find its way into the modern era, we really gave ourselves a ton of freedom with regards to technology. The ride modes are amazing. It totally changes the personality of the bike. We have this really beautiful four inch round TFT display. Bluetooth enabled and allows for us to have turn-by-turn -turn navigation and no longer having to worry about the traditional Sportster method of like taping your directions to your tank and trying your best to remember how to get there. But it also has all the upgraded riding safety enhancements. Having cornering enhancement, ABS, allow for a better riding experience. It's just like Sportster should be and it's completely unlike any other Sportster you've ever ridden. This motorcycle rides exactly the way that it looks. 
It's such an exciting, thrilling motorcycle to ride. If the 57 Sportster was a giant killer, then this is an Apex Predator. I mean, this thing is the ultimate evolution of Sportster. This will surprise a lot of people out on the street at just how competitive this motorcycle is and, and some of these performance metrics. It's just pissed off and ready to wreak havoc. Just an absolutely exhilarating feel. We tuned the delivered performance to be more torque-based. So stoplight to stoplight, you're going to be able to crank it and beat your buddy to the next one. There's just so much to unpack in terms of what the bike delivers from a performance standpoint, 121 horsepower. 94 foot-pounds of torque, 12 to 1 compression ratio, and a peak RPM of 9,500. 500 pounds, which feels just incredibly light and maneuverable on the road. Every ounce of power is just a whole lot of fun. It was fun charging into some of those corners and grabbing a handful and coming out of the corner. Perfect bike for twisted roads of Scotland. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it was fun. I can't wait for people to throw a leg over this bike and really experience the performance that this bike has. It's so agile and it's a real beast. Yeah. It really is. I mean, yeah. just every gear, it's just, there's a surprise waiting for you now. Yeah. You know, when we were riding today, I was reflecting on so much, you know, the, the heritage, my family, Scotland, but what I'm really reflecting on now after getting off that motorcycle is, you know, we're in exciting times for Harley Davidson, the Revolution Max 1250 and the new Sportster and what's to come, it's very, very exciting. Well, it was a great day. It was great to experience it with you. The history of your ancestors, a new bike, and I think it's time to have a whiskey now. I, I love that. <laughs> <laughs>